Many, many years ago, uh, we decommissioned the landfill and uh, capped it. Uh, it had about a 40 or 45 year uh, cap life on it before it could be perhaps used again. And so we're probably into 25 years and have another 20 to go. And there had been many uh, suggestions of what to do with a landfill that's capped. Could it be a golf course? Could it be a golf driving range? But uh, a number of years ago, there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, could we do solar uh, at the landfill? The Clarkstown Solar Field is constructed on a closed capped landfill approximately 13 acres of the landfill itself. It takes the sun's rays directly into the solar panels, uh, transfers that direct current to an inverter, which converts that power of direct current into alternating current, which then transports it out to the grid, which is Orange and Rockland, which they can then use in their power processing operations. Solar is the answer that engineers were looking for in so many ways because it sounds a little too technical, perhaps for the average person, to imagine that something as abundant as daylight itself can be converted into making the country a leader in the production of energy. The idea of the solar field came from the town board and from Supervisor Gromack. Um, they weren't sure if it made sense for the town, but they knew that what they wanted to do was get some people who already worked in the town and myself together to say, does this make sense? Does it make economic sense for the town over a long period of time? We produced that feasibility study and it determined that yes, it did make sense, the town could save a significant amount of money, while at the same time being environmentally conscious and reducing their gas house emissions. The big uh, kind of question was answered when we went to the New York State DEC and we said, have you ever permitted uh, panels on a cap landfill and they said you would be the first and I think that's what piqued uh, our interest. We said we like to be on the cutting edge uh, so we hired a, a, a very uh, good firm H2M that had done work with us to start the process and uh, started having meetings because the key was getting the DEC to permit us to do that and uh, pretty early on we found that technically we could put a solar field on a cap landfill. The challenge with the landfill is the cap. You can't penetrate that landfill cap. Uh, traditional ground mount systems, uh, pile driven. We, we just put in, put in posts, mount the PV, and it's very easy. Uh, on the landfill, there was a 12 month long uh, approval process from the DEC. We got the uh, clearance from our engineer, H2M, George Desmaris, as well as the DEC and said we could do that and it wouldn't pierce it. So that to us seemed like a home run. They put out a request for proposals. Uh, they had this unused space and George Holman over at Clarkstown, he had the idea, let's, let's put up a solar farm. In the state of New York, um, it's never been done before. Clarkstown was the very first uh, PV on landfill project, and we were fortunate enough through a very, very um, grueling uh, RFP process, you know, we were fortunate enough to prevail. We ended up selecting Onforce Solar. Uh, they proposed a two megawatt solar field. They were able to tap into about $2 million in subsidies from uh, the state of New York. Uh, in addition to that, uh, federal and state tax credits, and uh, we did it as a power purchasing agreement. So everything kind of lined up and you know, we were able to turn trash into cash. You know, over 25, 30 years, we think we will save about $4 million on our energy bill for just having that facility gathering energy from the sun. These projects are very team oriented. You need to have oftentimes an architect, an engineer, and a contractor working together. These aren't the type of the projects where one person can do it all. So it's great if you have a contractor who's skilled and can bring a design plan to the table to be installed, but then it's nice to have that skilled engineer who's had expertise in projects like this to be able to oversee the construction and installation to make sure that the town is protected and most important, that the health and safety of the public is protected. Professional engineers have been specifically trained to be advocates for the owner. Uh, we use our education, skills, experience really to, for the public benefit. Professional engineers are, are essential um, on any of these public works uh, projects to ensure uh, that uh, you really uh, don't have mistakes. If you don't have a good professional engineer or you don't have uh, the appropriate f uh, firm working within any of these projects, you can have terrible mistakes. You can have terrible mistakes with your, uh, with your planning, with your roads, 
Uh, we're very fortunate that uh, we've had a, a good firm that we've been working with, as well as a, a very strong town engineering department uh, working hand in glove on projects of this nature. So cer certainly super important to ensure that you've got a, a good engineering firm uh, that you can work with. It was a real pleasure working with the town of Clarkstown on a project as an engineer. When you first have a concept and then you look at that concept to see if it makes sense and then you apply that concept to a, a real life situation to see how it could work and then you go through negotiations with contractors and then you see it being built and now you see the energy that's being produced which is going to help the environment. It was October is when we had the ribbon cutting but we didn't actually flip the switch until, funny enough, December 21st. Um, so the, uh, the equinox, the uh, uh, on the equinox, you know, the, the day with the least amount of sunlight is when this, the switch actually went on. It was very exciting. Uh, it would be nice if we could open it in, you know, in the summertime. Uh, but in the dead of winter, we, we turned on the switch and the project has been uh, performing excellent since then. Well, I, I believe the future is really, uh, pardon the pun, but it's really bright uh, with, with, the, uh, with the solar field. Not only are we going to save the $4 million, uh, at the end of the 20 years, uh, it's estimated that it will have about an 80 to an 82 percent efficiency rating. Um, that's based on the burn rates that they've done on these panels um, uh, in the simulation, you know, in, in the labs, if you will. So um, we believe that uh, this is going to give us um, the ability to be able to go well beyond the 20 years. Uh, the lifespan is projected to be 35 to 40 years for, for the panels themselves. So we potentially could have 10 to 15, uh, maybe 20 years of, of these panels continuing to perform where all of the electricity that's produced at that point uh, is, is savings to the town. I certainly want to give credit to uh, our town board that had the vision to embrace this project, certainly our private consultants, but also the team right here, our director of environmental control, Luke Clerical, who will be uh, attending uh, to receive the award on behalf of the town of Clarkstown, was an integral part, as well as H2M, George Desmaris, Dennis Letson. We were just very honored to, to be a part of it and and to assist in, uh, assist in getting it done for them. Certainly, Clarkstown was a bit of a guinea pig uh, along the way. I mean, we 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 had some difficulty on, on kind of jumping through some of the hoops, but we got through it. So if we can do it, I think any one of the other municipalities can do it as well. Real happy to have been involved in the project, and uh, you know, it's one of probably one of the big significant projects in my career.